Ever since I started posting videos, I've been compared to Bob Ross by many viewers. I've been called the Bob Ross of chainsaws. I've been called the Bob Ross of nature. The Bob Ross of this, the Bob Ross of that. I don't even remember most of them. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's the hair. Okay, maybe it's not the hair. It may have something to do with the way I talk. Whatever it is, today we're going to roll with it. He and I have something in common, and that's creating forests. He used to do it on canvas with a paintbrush. I do it out on the land. Okay, I don't actually create forests, but I restore them. A lot of people probably think the biggest problems our forests face is deforestation. In some areas that might be the case, but out here in the western part of the United States, we have the opposite problem. Instead of having a problem with a lack of trees, we have way too many trees. So many that our forests are overcrowded, becoming unhealthy, and vulnerable to catastrophic wildfire. Bob Ross did what he did by painting happy little trees. I do what I do by cutting down happy little trees. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Remember, when you're thinning your forest, you can do it however you like. If you want to cut down a tree over here, you can cut that tree down. If you want to leave a tree back here, you can leave that tree. Do it the way you like. It's your forest, you can cut the trees down however you want. Okay, now that I'm trying to sound like Bob Ross, I probably sound nothing like Bob Ross. Let's get back to work. <laughs>
This little sugar pine is dying of blister rust, which is a fungus we imported from Germany. Thanks a lot, guys. So what did we just do here? Aside from creating a big mess that I'm going to have to clean up now and cutting down a bunch of happy little trees. Well, let's look at some of these stumps and find out if they really were happy little trees. Let's see what we can learn from this stump. The first thing we might learn is it might be hard to see tight tree rings on camera. This one is a little over seven inches in diameter. The tree rings in the middle where the tree first started out are just a little under a sixteenth of an inch, which is okay growth, but it's not growing very fast. The farther out it gets, the closer the rings are together, which means the tree is slowing down in growth. When you get out toward the edge, the rings are so close together, you would need the type of tool that starts with micro or micro in order to measure them. I don't know if you can even see them on camera. Tight grain dug fir does make high quality wood, but at the rate these are growing, it may take 200 years to produce a significant amount of wood. And these days, who has the patience for that? If we were to compare this little stump to this ponderosa pine tree, if we were to cut this pine down, which we're not going to do, count the rings on this pine, what we may find is this pine could be close to the same age as that small diameter tree. Why is that? Instead of wee, tiny, close together growth rings, we would find big, wide growth rings, which means this tree has grown much faster over its life. Years ago, I cut one of these down over there because there were too many of them together and the top of it died out. It had growth rings that were over a quarter inch wide. That's the growth we can get out of these pines in this kind of spot. So this is a happy little tree. It was surrounded by all these little Douglas fir trees that just don't do well in this spot. As we can see by the growth rings on them, they were not happy little trees. They were hardly growing at all. All they were doing was taking water and nutrients out of the ground that could have been going to these trees, which are better suited to this site. And on top of that, there were just too many trees in this spot. These big, healthy ponderosas, nice full crowns, Got one over there, got another one over here. Look at that, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trees all around it that just don't need to be there. We only need that one tree there. We don't need seven trees in the same spot. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trees, all trying to take up this one spot and competing for the limited water that's in the ground here. Around here, it can be common to not get any significant rain at all during the summer. So water is limited. When you have too many trees competing for limited water, that can become a big problem. Now with all these other ones down, there'll be more resources for these trees that we leave, so they'll now have a better chance of continuing to grow and become bigger happy trees. Let's clean this mess up, which of course involves getting to play with the tractor.
We have one tree left on the ground to pull in. I'm going to cut this one more tree down to pull in with it. I think it needs to have a friend. Everything should have a friend. Everybody needs a friend. That's better. We gave it a friend. How about that? All these trees just turned into a big pile of firewood. I don't know if you can see them, but we have two saw logs that we got out of it. They'll be barely big enough to put on the mill, but they'll have very tight grain and very small knots and very few knots. We'll get a little bit of really high grade lumber out of them. The rest of these went to firewood because they're just not big enough and not straight enough to put on the mill. They're just not worth it. We still have a lot of trees to thin back here. Look at this jumbled mess of trees. There are just way too many of them. Back here we'll be getting into some bigger ones that we can make some saw logs out of. Which is good because I really don't need the firewood. But we're going to have to shut things down today. We have an expected high today of 102 degrees. As the afternoon temperatures rise the humidity will fall. And that equals high wildfire danger. So we need to shut down so we don't risk sparking a wildfire. We're trying to prevent wildfires here, not trying to create them. Or maybe not trying to prevent them but trying to reduce their intensity. Instead of a fire intensely going through all this fuel load, we want to reduce the fuel load so fires that do go through here are beneficial. They'll just creep around and clean up the forest the way they're supposed to. I think I've beat that dead horse enough for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. What we might find is this pine may be same to the same. Well, me, well, ah. Aren't you all? But we're going to have to shut things down for today. Go away, fly. But we're going to have to shut dang, shut dangs, shut dangs down. But we're going to have to shut things down today. Go away, fly. You're acting like a fly. <laughs>